Parents of Reddit, what lessons have to try to teach your kids that completely backfired? As good people, we taught our kids that littering isn't nice. As humans, we also let some curse words fly in front of them. We were at our city's 4th of July celebration when the eldest was 4. We were walking around and someone tossed their trash on the ground. Captain Litterbug flew into action, picked up the trash and yelled, Hey butthole, you drop this, while tapping them on the butt. I wanted to teach my son the value of money and work ethic because he kept wanting Robux. I decided it would be a great teaching moment, and a win-win opportunity as he was just getting to the age in which I think he should start doing chores around the house. He really wanted to buy some skin or something, so I created a chore chart and gave each chore a value. We established a schedule and everything. It was working out majestically. Every day without asking he was doing dishes, cleaning his room, picking up the dog poop. It was epic. Then one day, I came home and nothing had been done. I asked him hey man, what's up with the dishes? Oh and go pick up the dog poop too. He simply replied, nah, fighting back rage. I simply said, excuse me he said, he made enough money over the last x days that he bought his skin and he was good now. It was hard to argue. This is like the same effect going to a hotel has. You go to this clean place, where food is delivered to your bedside, and no one is ever making you do anything. Then you go back to your crap job and crap life of having to pick up after yourself. Till that teaching kids lessons is like getting your wish granted by Bag Genie. My in-laws love telling this story about my fiancé. He was resistant to potty training, and they eventually got him to start using the potty by telling him that he had to be out of pull-ups before a family trip to Disney World. Because Mickey Mouse only sees big boys and girls, and also who wants to log a diaper bag around Disney? Anyway, it went great, they had a great trip, and the day after they got back, he took a crap in the living room. When asked, he said I don't got to use the potty cause I already saw Mickey Mouse. They very firmly told him that if he was old enough to use logic, he was far too old for diapers. And that was the end of that. When my older son was about 3 or 4 years old, we realized he was starting to act very spoiled and materialistic. We always tried to make him see how lucky he already had it, but he constantly begged us for every toy, candy, and treat he saw anywhere and everywhere. Around that time, I came across a great photo spread that involved the photographer traveling around the world and snapping photos of different children with their most prized possessions. Of course, the kids in the US, Canada, and Europe were mostly photographed in rooms filled with stuff, but there were also photos of children from impoverished nations, usually showing the child with only one old, dirty stuffed animal. I thought I was going to accomplish this brilliant parenting move by sitting him down and going through the photos with him. I'd explain how the kids with rooms like his were beyond lucky and he should feel more than satisfied with all of the great stuff that he had. Then I would show him the other photos and he would finally understand that there are so many other children in the world with far less than he had. We looked through the photos and talked about each one. We finally got to one with a little boy standing on his cot with his one possession, a well-loved, dingy looking stuffed monkey. My son looked at it for a long time. I could see his wheels spinning. Success I thought, after a long bit of silence. He finally looked up at me, gave me a sweet smile and said, I want that monkey. Captain Price, mission failed. We'll get him next time. Not a parent but when I was around 12, my father suspected that I stayed up late playing video games, even though I didn't. One night he went into my room and told me that I shouldn't play my Game Boy Advance past bedtime, because I needed to rest. That's when I realized I could play my Game Boy Advance past bedtime, and I've suffered from insomnia since then. This story is my favorite, when parents give you an idea you didn't even consider previously. Saw a clip on local news about a toddler saving her mom's life by calling 911 when she collapsed. Figured it was a good idea to teach my toddler 911. Had two cops at my door 5 minutes later. Good response time. A friend of mine was trying to teach his son not to hit his daughter. So anytime the son hit the daughter, he started hitting the son in the head. It's not hard, but enough to hopefully jog some sense of empathy. Actual result, the son would cover his head with one hand and smack his sister with the other. 
When my daughter was 10, she wanted to try out for a community theater version of Beauty and the Beast. She got nervous though, and almost backed out, because she was so sure she wasn't going to make it. My husband, who did some acting in high school, stepped in and said that he would also audition, even though he knew he was never going to make it. He wanted to demonstrate to her that it's okay to audition for something that you don't think you're going to make. She ended up not only just making it, but she got the part of Chip. My husband got the part of Morris, Belle's father. He didn't even want to be in a goddamn play. When my daughter was young I was trying to teach her the value of money and decided to start giving her an allowance. She had a few tasks to do around the house and afterwards on the weekends before we would go out, I'd give her $5. I explained that because she helped out and did her chores, she had earned money to spend on whatever she wanted. She happily accepted and stashed her money in her room. I thought nothing of it. Later that evening before I tucked her into bed after reading to her, she goes to her money jar, pulls out $2 and hands it to me, and explains that it's for being a good daddy. After I got the money, I gave her a hug and told her I loved her. When she was asleep I put the money and some more in her jar. Buy yourself something nice hun. My aunt and uncle were trying to teach my cousin manners, and wanted him to address people as Mr. and Mrs. They used each other as examples, and consequently were known as Mr. Ian Uchili for two months. One of the funniest moments of my life was hearing my uncle describe how in the middle of the night instead of dad he started hearing Mr. Ian Uchili cracks me up every time. My 4YO cousin was taught to introduce people at school. He would introduce his parents to people like hello, I would like you to meet my friends, mommy and daddy, I'm kind of sad he grew out of that. My youngest boy would never listen, and he was always totally fearless. He was also always really lucky, dang near every time either of us told him don't do that, you're going to get hurt, he would do it and then not get hurt. So we ended up teaching him that when we said not to do something, that probably meant it was a fun thing to do. I remember really hoping that he would fall and break an arm or something non-life threatening or disabling like that so he would stop constantly giving us heart attacks. Which is weird to say as a parent but it never happened so it doesn't matter anyway. He never got anything worse than a small scrape or cut that could be cleaned and covered in 5 minutes before he was back at it again. Looking back I'm just glad this was before there was anything like jackass around to further encourage that crap. Now he's a stunt man for movies. Can't say I'm surprised. <laughs> Told my children they should always have a good reason for what they want to do as a way to curb impulsive behavior. I'm hearing about all the reasons constantly. My dad tried to implement the whole you must eat all the food on your plate in our house during meals. My mom was never a fan of that lesson, but my dad was stubborn so she just let it go. Well, one day my sibling had 2-3 bites of food left on their plate and was very clear that they were absolutely full and couldn't eat another bite. Dad wasn't having it and insisted they could not leave the table until all the food on their plate was gone. My sibling realized they weren't going to convince our dad that they were too full and finished the last few bites and then proceeded to vomit on the table and our dad. He stopped enforcing the rule after that. When I was about 2 years old my family was at a game in Angels Stadium. My mother went to the restroom and left me and my siblings with my dad. While he was busy watching I wandered off. When they eventually found me I was halfway around the stadium. A crowd had gathered to watch as a police officer held me out at arm's length while I screamed call the police. This man is not my daddy over and over again. My parents had taught me stranger danger, but forgot to teach me what police look like. Call the police, sir. We are the police. <laughs> Told my children repeatedly that if I found any more mess junk on their bedroom floor, I would be donating it to the thrift store. I told them they had 15 minutes to clean it up off the floor. Came back to find everything picked up, except they went into the kitchen cupboards and had put every food they didn't like in a nice neat pile right in the middle of the floor. As a child I noticed my sister was writing her name on the walls when she was drawing on them with crayon. Taking on the role of helpful big sister, I informed her if she was going to graffiti things she shouldn't write her name and give herself away. A few weeks later, she was carving patterns into the wooden desk in the study and carved my name into it instead. I remember in third grade getting in trouble for putting graffiti on the school wall. The artist had signed it with my first name, which is a fairly common name. I was both outraged at the false accusation and offended that they thought I was that stupid. 
I always tell my children that the lottery is a tax on people that are bad at math. I let my 8 year old spend a few hard earned dollars on a powerball ticket to prove it and he won $100. Taught my now 16 year old to always compliment people who insulted you. We were in a Burlington coat factory in Michigan when my mother was shopping for a bathing suit to take to Florida. There were a few to choose from, so she was complaining. My kid was 4. A woman trying on pants and said something rude to my mom who was asking my opinion and my daughter caught on that my mother was agitated. She squeezed out behind me and told the woman, your teeth are such a pretty yellow. Haha <laughs> I can't tell if she knew what she was really doing, but super awesome either way. My parents taught me to call 9, 1, 1, when I saw somebody doing something illegal. I called the cops on the Wiggles movie I was watching when I was 5 because a clown stole a cake. Luckily the 911 operator realized I was young. My story didn't make sense because it was a kid's movie. Asked to talk to my mom before sending out cops. I called 911 when I was 4 or 5 years old because I witnessed the mailman steal a letter out of my mailbox. I had to be told how the mail system worked after that. I'm a nanny. 2 years old was refusing to wear her hat. It was hot. I told her if she didn't put her hat on she would have to wait in the car. She started walking away from me. Where are you going, car? Drink and I will be there at the... Playing carnival fair games is a waste of money. My son wanted to spend his $20 to win a Pikachu stuffed animal from his allowance that he saved up. We told him he would be wasting his money and he would not win. He spent $15 and won the biggest prize. To be fair, playing carnival fair games isn't a waste of money if you have the mindset that you are paying for the fun of the experience and not the prize. Taught my young toddler son how to go upstairs. I did not realize that going downstairs is in fact a completely different, and far more dangerous, skill set. Lucky for us, the kid seems to have finally grasped the finer points of head protection. Now I'm picturing a toddler throwing himself down the stairs, with his arms wrapped around his head. When I was a cub scout, my family and I attended a large fundraising dinner. This included a raffle with many prizes, the best of which was a brand new pool table. At the time, I had an allowance of $2 a week. I asked my parents if I could use up my allowance money for the next 6 weeks and spend $12 on raffle tickets to try winning the pool table. Everyone wanted that prize, and everyone was adding handfuls of tickets. There were dozens upon dozens stuffed into the jar. My parents decided that this would be a good lesson about the dangers of gambling. They agreed to let me use my allowance for the next 6 weeks, but warned that I wouldn't win the prize and would not be given any more money for quite some time. I'd have to learn the hard way not to pay with cash I didn't have. I won the pool table. I tried the whole have your kids quote chores for pay and bid against one another. It's supposed to teach them about working for their money and not expecting handouts like an allowance. It turned into every time I asked them to do something I good how much will you pay me? My parents had very clear lines about these are your chores and you do them because you are a part of the family and these are things we are willing to pay you to do because they are either horrific or something we'd be willing to pay a professional to do hence that summer I got paid like $300 to clean up all that pigeon crap in the barn. You have been visited by Warren Woody. He's concerned that you didn't like the video. Leave a like to make Woody feel better. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. Or don't. Either way, have a great day you magnificent people.